So Firefox 54 just came out a few days ago, and with it comes support for multiple content processes. Now we're not gonna go into the details of what exactly that means, but for the end user, that should mean that Firefox will be faster, more responsive, and use less memory. If you're interested in diving a bit deeper and learning about what this multi-process thing is all about, Mozilla wrote a really good article about it on their Medium site. The article talks about the Goldilocks principle and computer memory usage versus speed and some other good stuff. It's worth reading. But in this video, we're just going to compare the latest version of Firefox, which is version 54, versus the latest version of Chrome on Linux, specifically on Ubuntu 16.4. Now I started out this video with the idea of including a Windows VM and doing some benchmarks between Windows and Linux, but I think that that's actually a better topic for another video entirely. So we're just gonna focus on Chrome versus Firefox on Ubuntu. So we're gonna be using KSysGuard to monitor the resource usage because my primary desktop is KDE and KSysGuard is awesome. So I've launched both browsers in their respective incognito or private browsing modes and they're at the new tab page. Depending on how you look at it, at idle, Chrome is using a significantly greater amount of system resources than Firefox is. If you look at the main Chrome process, it's only using about 130 megabytes of memory, which is actually less than Firefox. However, you can't just ignore the 13 sub-processes that Chrome spawns. If you add the memory usage for all the sub-processes up, you get about 450 megabytes, and that's Chrome doing nothing. So the first test we're going to do is we're going to use Chrome and navigate to CNN.com. We're going to use the Chrome Developer Tools and monitor the Network tab and see how long it takes for the entire page to load. The Network tab will also give us an idea of the number of requests and the amount of data that's being transferred. So the entire page was loaded in about 20 seconds. There were 283 requests and 1.3 megabytes were transferred. If we look at the memory usage, we went from about 450 or whatever we had before to about 930 megabytes being used just to render this page. Now granted, that was pretty quick for the amount of resources and media on the page, but almost a gigabyte of memory just to render CNN? Now let's take a look at Firefox. We'll follow the same process with Firefox. We'll open up Developer Tools and go to the Network tab and navigate to CNN. From the get-go, it seems like Firefox is significantly slower. What's interesting is that Firefox is showing 10 megabytes transferred, opposed to Chrome only showing 1.3, and the requests on the Firefox side are 243. On the other hand, it took Firefox over a full minute to render and show everything on the page. Granted, most of that time was actually spent rendering the ads, so the vast majority of the content on the page was already rendered before the ads were. When we look at the system resources, it looks like Firefox has spawned a sub-process, but the overall memory footprint is about 630 megabytes. That's around 300 megabytes less than Chrome used. So for the next test, we're gonna do the same sort of thing, but we're gonna use multiple tabs. Rather than using the bloated CNN.com, we'll start with a more lightweight website like Reddit. Starting with Reddit, we'll open a new tab for my website, we'll open a new tab for Twitter. We'll use another news site, this time it'll be MSNBC. We'll open the homepage for Mozilla, and one last tab with Google.com. So once all those tabs are done loading, we'll look at the system monitor, and holy crap, all of these tabs Less than 600 megabytes. Now granted, it did spawn a new sub-process plugin container. I'm assuming it has something to do with handling all of these tabs. It adds 25 megabytes, not bad. So all in all, we're still looking at under 600 megabytes for these tabs. So let's switch over to Chrome, do the same thing. We'll open up Reddit, my website, Twitter, MSNBC, Mozilla, and Google. And when all the tabs are done loading, we're looking at close to 800 megabytes just to have these tabs open. That's it. That's all we're doing. We're not doing anything on the tabs. We're not doing, we're not looking at them. Just for Chrome to have those websites open and those tabs, even though we're doing nothing with them, we're looking at almost 800 megabytes. That's wild. Now let's see what the memory usage is like when we watch a full screen video. So we'll hop on over to YouTube and we'll pick a trailer from the front page and we'll full screen the video. In the system monitor, it all adds up to around 530, 540 megabytes. Now that surprises me, considering how much memory Chrome ate up while we had multiple tabs open. On the other hand, look at the CPU usage. According to this particular monitor, it's using about 5% of the CPU to render this video in full screen. So let's take a look at Firefox. We'll do the same thing. We'll go to YouTube and watch the same trailer. Full screen it and look at the system monitor. And it seems like Firefox is using slightly less memory, but significantly more CPU. 
Firefox seems to be using upwards of 10% of the CPU just to render this video. For the last test, we're going to be taking a look at a game, and not just any game, we're going to be looking at Zabalba. This game is a full-blown first-person shooter written in JavaScript, specifically ImpactJS. It's got some other stuff going on, but this is actually a really, really flippin' cool game, and if you've never heard of it or played it, you should go check it out. But I think that it'll make a really, really good test. So we're here in Firefox, and we're not in full screen because I want to make sure that we can see the system monitor. I've set it to always be on the top level. So as we're playing the game, the CPU usage remains at about 15 or so percent. What's surprising to me is the memory usage is no higher than 400 megabytes. Guys, that's less memory usage than a lot of desktop games. Now granted, there's not a lot going on, but this is a browser-based JavaScript game. So let's bounce on over to Chrome and do the same thing over there. Now keep in mind, I'm not tracking the frame rate of the game. The overall CPU usage is spread out across processes, and it is on average less than what Firefox used. Chrome also used slightly more memory throughout the game than Firefox, though at the very end it spiked to something like 8 or 900 megabytes for some reason. Alright, I think that's going to wrap this video up. Now I probably should have said it at the beginning of the video, but this is not meant to be any sort of scientific or official benchmark or testing video. Your mileage will probably vary based on what distro you're using and what hardware you have. And I know that there's a lot of tweaks you can do based on your hardware to have a lot of the heavy duty processing offloaded to your GPU. I'm not doing any of that here. It's also worth pointing out that I didn't visit any sort of official benchmarking websites because I found that a lot of those websites focus on JavaScript compliance and the actual engines powering the browsers, and that's not what we're focusing on in this video. This is end user stuff, performance that the desktop user will see. I'm not interested in the JavaScript compliance here. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video, and if you did enjoy this video and learned something, why don't you leave a like, comment, and subscribe? I appreciate your support, and thanks for watching.